Hi folks, this video is about writing leads for our um, news and feature articles. So I'm going to read you, start off with this quote from William Zinser, who wrote a uh, book called On Writing Well. The most important sentence in any article is the first one. If it doesn't induce the reader to proceed to the second sentence, your article is dead. And if the second sentence doesn't induce him to continue to the third, it's equally dead. Of such a progression of sentences, each tugging the reader forward until uh, he is hooked. So that's the truth of, of lead writing is our readers are basically goldfish. Like think about yourself and how often you stop and see something online and really read and follow all of the links and focus on something fully. Doesn't happen that often, right? We're just like, ooh, shiny, let's keep, let's keep scrolling. That's what we're up against. That's what we're competing against. So we really have to work on giving our readers exactly what they want, exactly what they need um, right up at front. And that's often going to come with our lead. So before we even get into leads, we need to talk about something that's called the inverted pyramid. This is how we're going to organize largely all of our um, all of our articles. And what that inverted pyramid means is we're just going to start with the most interesting, most relevant information and give it to our readers. And then we're going to go to what's the next piece of most interesting information. And then we're going to go to the next piece of most inf interesting information. Um, all the way until we get to whatever's not really that important anymore. Um, the idea is that we could apply what's called the SNP test. Basically, um, after reading your first two or three sentences, could your reader put your paper down, walk away, and know the general sense of what you're trying to tell them? Um, and if the answer is no, you need to rewrite that introduction, right? Get right to the point after, uh, after your title, after your first sentence, you need to tell me exactly what this article is about. Um, and so let's talk about some different ways to do that. So the first one is gonna be called a standard lead. And this is where you just like, right out of the bat, boom, tell me who, what, when, where, why, how. Summarize the five W's and the H, or as many as you can, um, starting off with the most important. So I think I've got an example here. So Hurricane Dorian, the massively deadly and, uh, massive and deadly storm has been downgraded to a category two um, after spending more than a day thrashing the Grand Bahama Island. This is exactly, I know what we're talking about, I know where we're talking about it, I know why we're talking about it, um, I know what has changed, right? This is all the important information in one sentence. Um, <clears throat> here's another one. Chicago Mayor Lori Lightfoot clashed with Ted Cruz over the latest burst of gun violence in the city, claiming that Chicago's decade-long crime problem is actually the fault of Republican-run states like Indiana because they don't have a common-sense gun legislation in place, right? So this is a news article that's just saying Here's the argument. Here's what's happening between these two politicians. Who, what, when, where, why. Um, cool. So aside from that, um, that works really well for like news stories. But if we're writing a feature story, which may not be necessarily hard news, here's what people need to know. Um, we might try to hook our reader's attention in a couple of different ways. We might use what's called an artistic lead. Um, and these are just some four of the common artistic leads. There's many, many more ways to um, introduce an article in an interesting fashion that's not just the five W's, who, what, when, where, why. Um, and what we're, we're going to focus on each one individually. So let's take a look at a narrative lead first. So a narrative lead just tells me a short little story. So you can kind of pause this and read and understand that, oh, I'm telling, you know, literally a story with an arc. There's a introduction, there's sort of a climax, and there's sort of a resolution right here in, in three very, very short paragraphs. We have one, two, three, four sentences, right, that have been telling the story. And this would be the introduction for me to talk about um, this person's experience, right? So that's a narrative lead. Tell me a story. Secondly, I've got a descriptive lead where I'm going to take um, a person, a thing, um, a scene, an event, and I'm going to describe it in as detailed a fashion as I can. So think about those sensory images, um, sight, smell, sound, touch, taste. Um, what are small details that you notice that you can tell your readers that will get them seeing things in maybe a new way or something that they may, maybe wouldn't have picked up on their own if they were to watch this on, um, <clears throat> watch whatever you're telling me about on a, on a video or something like that. Focus in, like draw my eyes attention to something. Um, so if you pause, you can see, you can read this and see how we focus in on what this person is doing with his hands, with the matchbook. 
um, which is a great description of this character who is obviously very kind of shaken after losing his home in a fire. Um, startling statements are a great like punch you in the face sort of lead where, it's, you know, I'm just right out of the bat, I'm going to say something that's going to grab your attention, right? This is what we would call like a traditional hook. Um, I want to get my readers interested in the very first sentence. So by 8 p.m., Mary will have her answer. I read that and I'm like, I got to know what the question was, right? Why is Mary waiting with bated breath for 8 p.m. to know whether something's going to happen or not? Um, Kate's first memory is getting bit by a snake, right? I know I want to hear that story now and I want to hear how this memory of being bitten by a snake connects with whatever else this writer is going to tell me. Um, Mr. Bart drinks three liters of coffee a day, right? That's startling. That is out of the ordinary. That's probably not very healthy. Mr. Bart, you should get your kidneys checked. Um, but it would get me, uh, obviously this is untrue. Uh, just kidding. Mr. Bart is a great teacher. But this would get me thinking about how Mr. Bart brings energy and passion to his classes every day, right? I want to read about that. I want to know about this teacher who's excited to be here um, and teach. And then our last one is just to compare and contrast. So where I'm going to take two things and I'm going to present some comparison, like here's how two things are similar or here's how two things are different um, to get my readers interested. So you can take a look at how this one is set up about like three years ago versus today. Cool. All right. So at the end of this video, I want you to pause it, flip open to a new page in your notes and try to jot down the four common artistic leads and define them without looking at the rest of this video. And then see if you can reach all the way back and remember what the five news determinants are. All right, good luck, folks.